So in today's video, we are going to take a look at the latest update from Microsoft, which is Windows 11 24H2. Now, this is quite a feature packed update. There's a lot of features in there for accessibility as well as functionality. So we're going to take a look at what we think are the best features of that Windows update. But stay tuned to the end, because what we're also going to do is explain to you how you can go ahead and get that update. Let's jump on the PC and get to it. So our first feature we're going to look at is the addition of Copilot that's now integrated into Windows 11. And you can find that here installed after you've done the update. Another big feature update of Windows 11 24H2 is the File Explorer. Now, File Explorer is obviously where you go and look for the files that are stored on your computer. If we go into this folder here, let's take a quick look. You'll see at first glance, not a lot has changed. It just looks quite normal. But if we right click on a file, you'll see that you have this little context menu here. Before the update, you would find that the icons were just the icons. You never had any explainer of what those actual icons did. So you kind of add a little bit of, of a bit of guesswork. So what I've done now is they've actually added the actual description of the uh, icon. So you've now says cut, copy, or whatever it might be, which I think is quite useful. But more importantly, if we come down to where it says compress to, you'll see that we've not only got the ability to compress files now as zip files, but we have these two other file formats. So 7z and tar, which are used by lots of different platforms. So that gives you a lot more wider scope on what you can do in terms of compressing your files to send them or store them away. So our next feature is live captions. And what live captions does is automatically generates captions for audio and video content. You can find it by going down to the system tray, scrolling to the bottom and you should find live captions on there somewhere. So we click that on. If we now go into this folder here that we've got a video and fire that up, you'll see that it'll automatically start generating captions for the video. So this is a great feature for those people who have um, hearing impairments and it just brings that video content live and makes it more accessible. Another cool feature is you don't have to have that pinned at the top. You can actually move that bar any way you like. So you can move it around on the screen to uh, you know wherever you want it to be. Okay, so our next feature is the energy save mode. Now this reduces energy consumption and it's great for extending the battery life and lowering your energy costs. And you can find that by coming down to the system tray and then toggling it on there. So our next big update for Windows 11 is a feature that I can't quite show you right now because I don't have a Wi-Fi connection on my desktop, but it's for support for Wi-Fi 7. Now, Wi-Fi 7 is the latest Wi-Fi technology, and I'm really pleased that Microsoft have incorporated the ability to support Wi-Fi 7, which gives much more reliable connections uh, wirelessly, and therefore providing much better internet connectivity for those devices that support Wi-Fi 7. Okay, so right now, what I'd like to do is head back over to accessibility and see what they've done in regards to that. Now, what Microsoft have done in this Windows 11 24H2 update is to provide better support for Bluetooth LE audio enhancement devices. Now, this is for enhancing uh, assistive hearing devices. And basically what this does enhances audio quality and battery life for those kind of Bluetooth devices. So if you have a hearing aid or a hearing device, this is gonna be a great feature for you. Okay, so I want to now head back over to that system tray and what have Microsoft done for that? Now, in the past, the system tray was quite a static thing. When you clicked on it, all these icons were very static and you might have not wanted them in that particular order. What they have done now is provide customization for it. So you could, for example, take this live caption and you can drag it around and you can pop it where you want it to be. Now, I think that's a great feature because it's like, uh, gives you the opportunity to customize your system tray how you want it rather than how Microsoft want it. Now let's look at a neat, sweet way of joining and sharing Wi-Fi networks with a QR code. So if we come over here to our system tray and we click on the arrow next to our Wi-Fi, and then we click on this I over here in the corner, you will go straight to the actual settings for that Wi-Fi. In the top corner here, you'll see show. If we click on show, you'll see that there will a QR code will come up and the password to log into that Wi-Fi. Now, if you can scan that QR code, well, obviously with your mobile phone, that should automatically connect you to that Wi-Fi. So one of the questions that you probably have is, well, how do I get that Windows 11 24H2? Well, the simple answer is leave it to Microsoft. 
If you go into your updates, you should find that by checking your updates regularly, it will come back and tell you whether or not you are uh, able to get that update, which of course you will do in due course. Microsoft are rolling out over a period of time, so don't rush in and try and get it done uh, overnight. However, if you are super keen and you are a professional user of a Windows device, you can go ahead and get the upgrade. The way to do it is if you head over to the Microsoft Windows uh, download for Windows 11, you will be able to see this button here where you can go ahead and download and follow the instructions to install that. Now, here is a caveat before you go ahead and do that, you must make sure that you do two things. The first one of which is to make sure your files are all backed up and safely tucked away. Because if you don't and you do this update and things get screwed up, that means you're gonna lose all your files. So the advice going forward is to always make sure you get a clean backup of all your data. And of course, if you're using Microsoft 365, those files will be synchronized into the cloud and therefore you've got a little bit of protection. But we always advise back up those files. The second thing you need to do is to run a system recovery. Um, and that basically means that you get to create a recovery disk. So again, if things go a bit pear-shaped and that upgrade decides to make your machine go all Willy Wonka, you can actually recover your machine. Now to do that, you head over into uh, your start button and just type in Windows Recovery. And if you run the recovery application, you'll see that this window will pop up you can go ahead and create a recovery drive. Now, in my case, the recovery drive will be approximately 16 gigabytes, which basically means you need a 16 gigabyte uh, USB pen drive before you start. And that will create a recovery disk for you that allows you to bring your machine back into the state it was before you did that upgrade. Now, so if you feel that all of that is a little bit of a mystery and you don't want to uh, give it a go, then our advice to you is to get in touch with us or your nearest IT professional and let them take care of it all for you. They have the tools and resources to sort these things out without you having to worry about it. Okay, so those are those uh, updates and those features of Windows 11 24H2. What do you think? Are those the kind of features that you think are useful in uh, Windows 11? Or do you have a different feature of Windows 11 24H2 that you like? please put them in the comments down below. Now, as always, we really appreciate your support on this channel. So please go ahead and subscribe and follow us for more tech videos going forward. My name is Rob from RLS Computer Services. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll catch you in the next one.